Working on this 2014 Articat Wildcat Trail. We bent a steering shaft in Moab on Poison Spider. And um, it was pretty bad. Uh, this right wheel was sticking out like this. And it actually climbed everything on the trail going in. But we tagged a couple rocks pretty hard on the way out going downhill. And um, about a quarter of the way out of Poison Spider, that wheel was really wonked. So we had to kind of limp it out. And we got it back to the truck. We straightened the steering shaft. It bent right here. This was the weak spot right here where these threads are. And so we got it back to the truck, put some straps on it, banged on it, pried on it, twisted on it, got it straightened out so we could drive it again. Took it on a couple more trails the next day. I think a uh, steel bender and something else. And it actually did really well. <clears throat> um, but that shaft has been bent once and it's been straightened. So I'm not happy with that. So I'm just going to change it and put a new shaft on it. The um, shaft that I ordered was about $50, $55, I think. Here's the part number. Hopefully they'll focus 0405-485. Tie rod end inner is what it's called. There's an outer tie rod. This is the outer tie rod. Uh, what they call the outer tie rod. And this is the inner. Okay, so the inner is the shaft. And uh, this is a 32 millimeter right here. I've almost bought a crowfoot set many times in my life, but I've never really needed one. A crowfoot looks like it's going to be nice on this. I started to buy a whole $120 set from, that was the cheapest one for a very few pieces uh, from Napa. And um, I decided just to buy the one that I need. 32 millimeter is kind of a big size. It's not in your standard set. So this was uh, 11 something on Amazon shipped prime to my door. So <clears throat> it's a perfect fit as you can see. And it's half drive, so that should do, that should do it. Okay, now... As far as alignment goes, um, I'm going to replace the shaft, then I'll get to alignment, but you can see how out of alignment it is already. And so the manual that, or the service instructions that come to the dealers for setup for these to make sure that everything's copacetic, one of the steps is to make sure the steering's in alignment. And so what they do is they straighten the steering wheel like that, and then you check to make sure that the steering shaft or that the steering box is centered so that there's equal amounts of shaft coming out each side. And how you tell that is, you might be able to see it right there. Where am I at? Right there. Okay. So this, get my hand in here, this groove right here, or this split in the clamp, has to line up with the white mark that's on the back side of this um, steering box. So let's, I'm going to put the phone down there, this will be a little nauseating. Bear with me. <clears throat> Try to get the phone right on top of it here so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so you can kind of see the white mark there. And if I can point it out without wrecking everything. That's a tight fit. Okay, so that white mark right there at the tip of my finger um, has to line up with this groove here. And actually on this one, there's a white mark on the shaft as well. A little bit hard to see, but see that white mark right there? It has to line up with that groove. So now that tells you the steering shaft is, uh, the steering wheel straight and the steering box is centered. So now we can make our alignment uh, adjustments off that. And you can see how bad this is here. Let me get out of the shadow. So I have the string touching the back tire, just barely touching the back tire on both sides of the front and rear of the back tire, right about centered of the wheel bearings of the axle center and then you can see the string comes up just barely touches that front tire so this one's way towed to the right and this one is the same way so you can see that big old gap back there so the steering box is centered I'm gonna go ahead and replace the shaft and then we'll get the uh, get this straightened up cool so once you center the shaft the steering shaft with the steering box on the little white mark on the steering box um, go ahead and tie the steering wheel down I just tied it back to the crossed it back to the seat here and so this one's pulling here and this one's pulling across and I can't move very well so it looks pretty centered from here from the driver's seat and I'll double check here to make sure it's centered here <coughs> yeah it looks good to me Okay, now it shouldn't move while I'm making my adjustments.
clamps in here and we got the this clamp on this side of the boot loosened we got the other side clamp boot loosened we have to work back over the top of this edge right here and it's a little bit hard to get over but that's the surface that we'll put the um crow foot on okay let's do that next the old shaft. You can kind of see how bent it was. And I thought it had it pretty straight. Um, the boot was a little hard to get off. This is super tight around the shaft here, but uh, not, not doable. <coughs> okay. I'm going to just leave this on this side of this. Try to slide this boot up over this boot right here index is right there in that groove so. okay there it is okay use some brake cleaner on this you can see it's mostly dry now it's all dry so there's no grease or crud on there I'll take some red loctite Put a little there, put a little there. Okay, cool. <coughs> right on, let's go get it on. Okay, spray brake cleaner in there. Some compressor, make sure it's nice and dry. Got Loctite on the end there. Sure, there's a torque spec for that, but I'm putting it on tight. <clears throat> Probably a little tighter than it needs to be. Don't forget to put this on before you screw the other end in. We got to reuse the jam nut. The jam nut didn't uh, come with it. So now we'll slide this boot over. Okay. Okay, just a tip, um, when I was taking the old one off, this up here, this connection, was very loose, so it turned really easily when I was unthreading the old one. The new one is really tight, and at first, I, as I was trying to thread it in here, I couldn't tell if it was uh, cross-threading here or if it was just tight up here, so I took this off again, um, spin it a couple times, just to kind of get a feel for how much tension it, there was up here, and then put this end back into the outer and uh, went ahead and threaded it in. I just made sure it was aligned from the top and then looked at the side and made sure it was aligned as well and then just kind of gently worked it and it threaded up and did the cross thread. Cool. It's got the new tie rod, inner tie rod on and I set it about the same number of threads that the old one was at and it's nice and straight and both clamps are on both sides of the boot and got the jam nut on and Got it reset up. We got the steering shaft straight with the steering box, so the steering box is centered. There it is. And <clears throat> got the string tight. Everywhere I put it, I put it about midline with the hub all the way around. It's a little low in the back because the back tires are a little bit taller, but <sighs> should be fine. So now I just need to start some toe, in, uh, toe adjustments 
the manual calls for one eighth to one quarter toe out for a non-power steering. So this was these were all non-power steering. I think in 2014. I think so. Uh, the toe out uh, helps you steer it a little easier at high speeds. It helps you be able to change directions a little easier. When we convert this to power steering, I'll put the toe in at zero. So what I'm going to do is just take a measuring tape and measure from the wheel here to the string, wheel to the string, and then I'll adjust that down to where, and I'll go ahead and set it for one eighth toe out, I think. So I'll put one sixteenth toe out on this side and one sixteenth toe out on that side for a total of one eighth toe out. Cool. So we're looking at the right side, driver or passenger side, and that's about one inch right there from the wheel to the string. And here, it's one and three quarter. So we've got a little ways to go there. And uh, we'll set this one, then we'll go ahead and set the other one. We're gonna try not to move anything um, while we're doing this. The manual calls says to set the toe in with the vehicle unloaded. Okay, so it doesn't say to suspend it in the air. It just says to do it with the vehicle unloaded. So no passenger weight. All right, so I confused myself there for a minute. <laughs> I, uh, all right, so it's gonna be a little bit hard to see here, but that's between one and a quarter and one and five sixteenths. And this is between one and three sixteenths and one and a quarter. So that's about an eighth. Uh, that's about a sixteenth and eighth. That's close. Okay, so I had forgotten for this for to be toe out, this front measurement, front of the vehicle, has to be smaller than the back one. And I was thinking that the back one needed to be smaller and the front one needed to be bigger. But you're actually measuring the distance from the edge of the string. So the front, this measurement from the wheel to the string has to be smaller in the front if you're going to have toe out than this measurement here. Okay. And uh, I'll probably go ahead and set the other side. I'll roll it a few times and double check and roll it again and double check it and just see where it's at. This isn't a car. I'm not too worried about it being super accurate, but it's pretty close. In the bent side, and uh, you can see it's pretty dang far off. So uh, inch and sixteenth. And here we're talking <laughs> two and three quarter. So we've got a little ways to go. Jam that loose. Oh, this shaft's a little bit too, isn't it? Look at it. It wobbles. All right, I rolled it. Looks pretty straight from the front to the rear. See what it looks like here. This is the back, and it is 15 sixteenths. And here's the front, should be a little shorter. That's about 14 sixteenths. And over here, I have the string sticking all further, um, lined up with the back wheel. But here, I have one and fifteen sixteenths in the front and then should be a little longer here and it's two inches exactly in the rear okay so it's about a sixteenth of toe out on each side for a total of one eighth let's drive it and see how she does looks good from there let's look from the front <coughs> Pretty good to me. Let's see how this side looks. Doesn't look wonky. Steering wheel straight. And it drives pretty dang good now. <laughs> 